I had introduced the concept sort of as part of as uh, as if it were a game. And if you think about moving these arrows on a cash flow diagram as a game, these compound interest factors and the patterns that they correspond to are the rules of the game. So, so um, the, you know, the most basic one that we have, the most basic pattern is that we'll have some, some P and some F, right? So we have a present value and a future value. And the way we relate those is if I know one value and I'm trying to find the other value, they're related by the compound interest factor. Now, of course, I also need to know, you know, the N, right? The number of periods. And I also need to know the I. So this is the information I need to play the game. And for this type of a pattern, I'm either going to be using the P, if I'm looking for the P, I say the P is going to be equal to the F, if I know that, multiplied by the P given F formula for the I, or the P given F factor for the I and the N. I'm just going to get rid of that logo. Okay. So, uh, and then the, the reciprocal is also possible, and it would look like this. And we've already kind of done that. And then remember the trick I, uh, the trick for making sure you're using the right factor is just to think of this almost as a fraction and think of, in this case, the F's canceling to give a P. In this case, the P's canceling to give an F. Okay, so this is, this is sort of one rule of the game that you need to learn. Another rule is an annuity. And let's just say we have, again, a P and we have uh, another, another cash flow diagram. But this time, I have a repeating cash flow. And that repeating cash flow we refer to as an A or an annuity. Now, I still have an I and an N. Okay. And then the formulas we'd use here are the P is going to be equal to the A multiplied by the P given A I N factor, or the annuity is equal to the present value times the A given P factor for I and N. And of course, each of these compound interest factors, these are, these are what we call the compound interest factors. Okay, so I'll, I'll do these in a different color. Right, so these are the compound, and these are the things that have those um, those funny names that I said. Don't worry about what the names are because sometimes I forget what they are. But what I'm trying to 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 get across is that it's the pattern that's important. So in the a given p and p given a, the p occurs at time t equal to zero, and the a starts at time period one and goes to time period n. Same thing up here, the P is at time zero and the F is at time N, where N can be anything. Okay, and then we have to use our chapter two skills to make sure that we are using the right value of I for whatever that period is, whether it's a year or a month or a day or a quarter or whatever it is. And again, I would encourage you to review the, the lecture examples or, or the recorded videos for for some good examples. There's two videos in particular. There's one with um, compounding more frequent than payments, and there's one with compounding less frequent than payments. If you're taking notes right now, I would, I would strongly encourage those two videos. Make sure you understand uh, both of those scenarios. Um, okay, so, and then the last uh, pattern that uh, I want to point out is um, a little bit tricky sometimes. Oh, the two, the two, you're asking if I could repeat the two uh, videos there, compounding more frequent than payments and compounding less frequent than payments. Uh, students find those per two particular videos illuminating when it comes to uh, understanding what interest rate to use for a given sort of number of periods, right? So compounding less frequent than payments, compounding more frequent than payments. And, and if you have trouble with that video, you can go walk back and watch the video on nominal and effective interest rates, right? So that's also a, a good one. Okay, 
Um, yes, the value of A is a constant. Value of A is a constant amount. And then uh, it, it referred to as an annuity. Uh, in the last sort of scenario, we have an annuity that is positioned the same as it is here. We always start an annuity here at time t equal to 1, and it always goes to time t equal to n. At time t equal to 0, there is nothing, but there may be an f at time t equal to n. So, uh, so that's something that sometimes throws students off. I think people will usually want to put the f you know, ahead of the last payment of the annuity or the last cash flow of the annuity, but in fact, it's not. The pattern that you have to learn for the F given A and A given F is that the F is positioned on the cash flow diagram at the same point in time as the last A payment. And nothing happens at time T equal to zero. And the formulas we'd use for this will be F is equal to the annuity times the F given A I N, or the A is equal to the F times the A given F I N. Okay, so, so that's the, that's sort of the summary of where we are so far, right? These are the so-called compound interest factors. I will sometimes refer to these as the time value of money equation. And that's not something you'll find in the book. It's, it's something that I do and it's something that I do um, just as a way to refer to this because in many instances, in many problems, your task will be to create the time value of money equation from a cash flow diagram and once you've done that, you can look at the time value of money equation and say, well, what am I missing? What do, what do I know? What do I not know? And sometimes it's not just a case of knowing, a, of looking for a P given an A or looking for an A given a P, and then you're given the I and the N. Sometimes you're not given the I. Sometimes you're not given the N. You know, we might say, how many years do you need to save X amount of dollars to reach a million dollars if you earn an interest rate of something? And if the unknown, if the unknown in the time value of money equation is inside the compound interest factor, then we have to use a few different tricks, some of which we'll talk about uh, today. So we'll be solving, let's say, for the values inside the time value of money uh, or inside the compound interest factor. We may know what that factor needs to equal. So it becomes a task of figuring out what value of I or what value of N makes that factor equal a certain amount. So, uh, so anyway, this is conceptually what you should come away from with that, from that first half of, of chapter three. And if you can do this, if you get this, then you kind of get most of what you're going to need for most of the rest of the course. So it, it's hard to really understate the importance uh, of these patterns and of these time value of money formulas.